let's get started uh, with the ABCs. So what you wanted was ca uh, carb counting, the ABCs of carb counting. Now, we know diabetes is a 24 seven disease. There are lots of decisions to be made, check sugars, take medications, exercise. Now, many of these decisions could be lesser, postponed, but there's one decision that has to be made three times a day or more, and that is eating. And with regards to eating, what matters for patients with diabetes a whole lot with respect to their sugars is carbs. So today we'll talk about the ABCs of counting carbs. Well, before we get started again, please uh, participate, ask questions. We have some poll questions for you. Please answer those as well. We very much appreciate the participation. All right. So what's the overview? What are we going to talk about? All right, first, all about carb counting, um, overview of carb counting, talking about see, these other things, the other carbs, fiber, uh, alcohol, and other things. Let's talk about them. They're, they affect sugars, may not be carbs, they're not fats and proteins. So what do, what do we do about those? All right, going behind the scenes, what is a carb? Why is it important in diabetes? And lastly, some actionable information, choosing carbs. Uh, what are the best carb choices? How many carbs should I be eating? So those are some of the questions I'm gonna try and answer today. All right, let's begin all about counting. So who should be doing carb counting? Well, frankly, everybody on the planet, uh, but in context of diabetes, of course, patients with type one diabetes, they have to count their carbs because they need to take their insulin based on a ratio with those carbs. Any patients with type two who are using mealtime insulin should also be counting carb. But then here's this general statement, any person desiring optimal weight and health probably should be monitoring what's going in their mouth and especially carbs. Um, so I think it's something that's useful for many, many of us. All right, there are two ways we have been counting carbs and I think it gets confusing. So I just wanna make sure that this piece is understandable. First is carb choice or carb serving, or sometimes we just call it carb. Hey, I ate three carbs for my lunch. So that's a carb choice or when we simply say the word carb. Now, the next thing we do now more recently is grams of carbohydrates. So my milk had 15 grams of carb. That's an example of grams of carbohydrates. How do these two relate? Does anyone know? So this time I would ask you, if you know how many grams of carbohydrate in each carb choice. Please, uh, you can type it in the uh, panel box on your right. Nancy says 15. Uh, Nancy, you got it. That's what it is, 15. So one carb choice, one carb, one carb serving, any of those things is equal to 15 grams of carbohydrates. And this is an important thing to just remember. As some of you start doing carb counting for your meals, just remember when your doctor um, or educator talks to you about carbohydrates, just ask, um, hey, carb choice, grams of carb. Very, very important. Keep this in mind. They're two different things. All right, so I'm reasonably hungry today. This is what my plate is today. Help me count the carbs in this. Uh, it's by the way, a reasonably colorful plate. I like it. One and a half cups of broccoli. I like it. My kids, uh, my son actually really likes broccoli. Uh, pork chop, I, I have uh, shunned meat, so I would say, but let's say I'm eating pork chop today. Uh, I love corn in the cob, Iowa, of course, that's what it is. So I usually eat three of them, but today I'm just going to eat half of a, a, a corn in the cob. One cup of milk and half cup sugar-free applesauce sugar-free applesauce. All right, what do you think guys? How many carbohydrate, grams of carbohydrates in this? Um, you have some choices on your screen, take uh, whichever one you think it is. And let's see what we come up with. Casey, this is cool, I like it, how? Oh, I cannot vote, all right. I'm not allowed to vote, all right. You know the answer. All right, so we have two people who guessed 45. One person has guessed 57. We have a guess of 75. All right, well, let's find out. Um, so if we go forward, um, 
how do I get rid of the screen? Uh, Just I have, go over again. I'll show you the carbs for each. Right. Now I am seeing grams of carbs in meals on my screen. I need to get rid of that. I perhaps need to answer it. I'm just going to go ahead and answer it. Okay. okay. Guys, we have a technical issue here. I can't. Yeah. All right, there we go. Thank you. So first, a cup of milk. Um, let's find out. 12 grams or 15 grams, about pork chop, none. Corn in the cob, about 15 grams. Broccoli, that's a pretty good sized broccoli, 15 grams of carb. And how about half a cup? So half a cup of sugar-free, 15 grams. So the total is 57 grams uh, or four carb choices. So one of us got the answer right. That's cool, great. But I don't think you guys were too far off. I really, everybody was just about around that uh, choice. So I'm really glad that we were able to kind of understand this we had uh, about 60 grams, 57 grams, or four carbs or four carb choices or four servings. Okay, so this is important. So I just wanna make sure that if there are any questions, we can get those answered. Case, please ask any questions you have in case you have any questions on this. Not yet. So this is one of those take home points of uh, counting carbs and uh, grams of carb. All right. Now let's move on. So that's the carbohydrates, but there are many other things that affect sugars, right? Our body converts one thing into the other all the time. What I want to do is next talk about other things that they're not carbs, but they are in that category. So let's talk a little bit about these things. Things that are sweet, artificial sweeteners, and there are so many of them. Well, they provide the sweet taste of sugar, but have no carbs or calories. Um, my uncle who motivated me to become an endocrinologist by his death in 1984, I clearly remember him. Uh, in India, we used to have these small patches, uh, small packs of saccharine, and that's what he used to do for his tea. So yeah, artificial sweeteners do help. They have no carbs or calories, um, and they do not directly raise blood sugar. Sometimes some of them can increase insulin resistance, but in general, they don't. One of the common questions that I get asked is, which one is the best? I think the answer is none, uh, meaning I would say, let's go without. But if you have to have sweet, then think about things that comes from fruit. Um, I think that's sweet, I like. So it's packaged very well. But if you must have something, then at least these days, the trend is stevia might be the one of the better ones um, from an artificial sweetener standpoint. All right, how about fiber? Fiber is a carb that is found only in plants, uh, not in animal food. Um, you eat fiber, you typically cannot digest it, and thus fiber will not cause your blood sugar to rise. In general, we recommend that you ignore the fiber, but if there's a significant amount of fiber in the serving, five or more grams of fiber, then you may want to subtract that from total grams of carbohydrates. Remember, uh, especially for those people who are doing carb counting, this is important. I'm adding, uh, eating this bar, it has 17 grams of carb, but five of them are fiber. So then actually I'm only doing 12 grams of carb. So keep that in mind, especially important when you think of ratio. Fiber is a good thing. So let's look at this nutrition label. It has 10 grams of carbohydrates total out of this five grams is dietary fiber. So then your net carbohydrate is only five grams. All right. Reading labels is important. Uh, and this is, these are the new labels where this is how the information is presented. So please look at the labels uh, for sure. All right, um, another favorite thing is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, the weekend is here. What are we going to drink? All right. Now, I tell my patients in a, as a general thing, uh, you know, again, I think we should not limit lives for patients with diabetes in any way, but I think there are certain rules to be followed. Um, I, in general, say diabetes and um, in, uh, especially insulin and alcohol don't go well together. And that's why for type ones, I'm especially cautious. Main thing I'm saying is that you want, to, if you drink, you want to avoid hypoglycemia. 
the uh, alcohol prevents your liver from producing glucose. If you go low after your drink, that's a problem because you may not be able to recover as fast. What kind of drinks? Type two, uh, low uh, uh, carbs. So light beer, about five grams of carb, um, uh, whichever you choose. Dry wine, one to five grams of carb. So that uh, is what I might suggest. Type ones or people who are on medication that can cause hypoglycemia, be careful. Choose beverages low in alcohol content. Sip your drink very slowly. Consume water along with your alcohol and eat while you are drinking. All right, so I understand there's a question. So Casey, go ahead. Someone um, says that this seems pretty complicated. They want to know if there are any easy tricks to count carbs. Ah, all right, um, easy. Um, it is, um, I, I think, so here's what I would say. Yes, it is complicated. Um, fortunately, most of us are creatures of habits. So uh, we eat typically the same foods, maybe top 100 foods. When I'm starting somebody on carb counting, I tell them, look at your common foods and get a handle on them. So that's one thing I would say is uh, look at um, the common foods and um, do that. Second thing is technology, apps. I'm trying to lose weight right now, so I'm using MyFitnessPal. There's another one, Lose It, there's Calorie King. There's a whole bunch of apps. Now these apps are getting better and better and better. So for, for my fitness pal, I just, initially I do have to find the food. Once I find the food, then um, it tells me serving size and then grams of carbohydrates and calories. It also can scan. Um, so you, that barcode, it automatically picks up the carbohydrate information. And then it does all the math for you. So if you're seeking simplicity, a smartphone and an app like MyFitnessPal, LoseIt or CalorieKing.com will be useful. Hopefully that helps. Um, it is not easy. And I'll tell you, it's not accurate. We just lump things together. It's highly inaccurate. So our friends up in Minneapolis International Diabetes Center, they actually kind of say, you know what, carb counting is not easy. It's complex. Let's just go with meal size, small, medium, and large meal. That could happen too, but those are some of the things to think about. Casey, you have another question? Please go ahead. Nancy would like to know if Stevia and Splenda have the same values, if one is a better choice than the other. In general, Stevia is better than Splenda. Um, the, um, in terms of carbs, neither one of them should affect your sugars. Uh, I would recommend Stevia. Excellent. Thank you for your questions. Let's keep going. All right, to part two, behind the scenes. Let's walk behind. What is it? So here's the other thing. When we say carbs affect sugars, fats and proteins do as well. This is looking time zero right here. You ate a meal. Only carbohydrates, you do something like this. Only protein, you do something like this. It affects your sugar for the next up to four hours. You do fat, it may go six, eight, 12 hours. So this is something important to remember. Fats have the uh, longest uh, effect and the lowest peak. So really cool. Uh, proteins um, like the meats and the cheese and so forth, about four hours. And then carbohydrates do it the fastest. So here are some examples of the three different meals. I'm a big fan of a kind of mixed meal, a yummy, tasty, good, healthy, uh, colorful meal. That's what I really like. Colorful meat, add colors to your food. And that means we are having the healthier uh, foods as well. So hopefully this helps you understand that everything gets converted, but of course, carbs have the biggest impact on our sugars and it happens pretty rapidly. All right, um, just a little bit of science. So what happens when we eat carbs? Carbs have to be broken down into single sugar units. That's the only way our body will observe. There are two main types of carbohydrates, simple. This is the glucose, sucrose, et cetera. This is what's found in milk and fruit and some of our candies. Complex like the starches, bigger molecules. So this is one sugar molecule right here, one glucose molecule. But they also come in larger chains, and especially when we start looking at veggies, uh, these uh, rice and the noodles and breads, we're looking at starches. And what happens is when we look at how the body absorbs these, the complex starches have to be broken down into single units, and then they get absorbed. 
So if you eat more complex carbohydrates, hopefully you will have a lesser uh, peak of the, um, your sugars after the meal. If you eat very simple carbohydrates, the class of orange juice, you're more likely to see a, a much faster peak. So something to keep about, uh, you know, we say a carb is a carb is a carb, but really carbs are different. Um, the ones that are packaged better naturally in plants typically are better versus, um, uh, you know, the some of the man-made one as well as the fruits one. All right, uh, Casey, go ahead with the question. Um, our user Wolf Woman wants to know if protein is broken into glucose, why do we not consume them? Could you clarify the question again, um, if you can type in? So protein is amino acids, all right? It's not a direct effect on sugars. If we're not eating enough um, of the um, carbohydrates with a meal, that is when uh, the body will convert the amino acids into glucose, but it's a longer process. So that's how it does. Go they ahead. I wanted to know why we do not count them. That's oh. Okay, why don't we count them? The reason is it's too hard, it's too complex. So imagine this, uh, we, are, um, we are not only counting for carbohydrates, now for proteins, and proteins don't necessarily pro match the profile of how insulins go up um, when we take them subcutaneously. So that's the reason there are many of my patients who will have, for breakfast, they'll only have protein. Hey, I have two eggs. Now, if they don't take any insulin, they're high at lunch. So I do have to give them some insulin, but usually it's a decision, well, maybe two units works for you or whatever the need for that person is. But in general, complexity is the reason we don't include them in our calculations. Thank you very much. I appreciate these questions. That's what makes it all fun. All right. So now to choosing carbs. How many? What kinds? What's better? What's worse? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna give you, show you a list of carbohydrates, 15 grams of carbs or one serving. Um, go ahead in your chat box, tell me which one do you think is one of the healthier ones um, um, of, on each side, the left side and the right side. So find me uh, the two most healthy carbohydrates uh, that you can think of in your list. Thank you. Um, so we have four people have guessed one small fruit, four people have guessed milk, one person has guessed the potatoes, beans, corn, and peas. All right, let's take a look. Um, I know it's a little confusing, but let's uh, just go through the answers right here. These are more of the better, they're packaged better. So a piece of fruit. Um, one would argue on the potatoes, but it's still better packaged than many, many other carbohydrates. Beans, corns, and peas, of course. So again, th this is uh, kind of that plant-based diet. If you look at, I mean, uh, as many of you might become aware of the plant-based diet, and it's no surprise that those foods are uh, packaged better and will affect your sugars uh, in a better manner. How many carbohydrates? Uh, well, in general, this is an oversimplification, I'll tell you. Most men, many men would need about four to five um, carbohydrate choices. That's 60 to 75 grams. And many women will need three to four carb choices per meal. So that's what a general recommendation would be of a balanced diet. Now, uh, low carb diets and high protein diets, it's such an amazing uh, fad and stuff that's happening right now uh, and has been for the last 10, 15 years. Um, I'm sure some of you will ask, huh, I do one or two carb choices and uh, I was told not to do more, et cetera. This is the general recommendation of a well-balanced diet of maintaining weight. If you want to lose weight, you probably want to sub subtract one carb choice from each of these meals. Um, if uh, that's what I would say. Um, the, I am not a huge fan of these aggressive uh, uh, low carb diets, which people do, and it really improves their sugar, but they, then they also rebound and have high sugars a few months later on. A yummy, tasty diet that you can follow easily and follow for your life is what I recommend as the best diet. All right. Moving on, I think we are getting closer. Um, so let's summarize. Um, what did we talk about today? 
Um, so who should be counting carbs? People with type one, people using mealtime insulin, and anybody else who wants to follow a healthy diet. Remember, carb choices versus carb counting as grams of carbs. So keep that in mind, carb choices versus grams of carb, 15 is the number. Complex and simple carbs, think of uh, more complex carbohydrates. Remember what we talked about sweeteners, artificial sweeteners don't affect your sugars. Fiber, subtract fi more if it's more than five gram in your meal. Um, and all the wonderful things we talked about, alcohol, and then how many carb choices? Um, you know, four to five for men, uh, three to four uh, for women, 60 to 75 grams uh, for men, and 45 to 60 grams for women. 